Podcast. I'm Jeff James, as always with me, the incredible, unobtainable ruler of Vermont, Luscious Brody Fultz. How are Ooh, you? Vermont now. Yeah, we're, going a little northeast. We're just going for all 50 states here and some of the commonwealths and getting all of it. Maybe, maybe Puerto Rico one day. Yeah, yeah. I'm I mean, good, it's not a state, but territories. How are, yeah. how are you? I, uh, I know how you are, but go ahead I'm and doing tell all right. people how you are. <laughs> I've got a pretty brutal migraine right now, but I'm doing okay. Well, it's not as bad now. It's, it's almost gone, but I'm doing all right. I'm doing good. But I would be doing much better if one would follow our Instagram and Twitter at Diggity Podcast or subscribe to our YouTube channel, Diggity, D-I-G-G-I-T-Y. Search for us. We are three to four spaces down from <laughs> Black Street's No Diggity music video. No idea if we'll ever surpass them. I mean, <laughs> One just day. One the day. incredible SEO of that video is that's is, that's the is bar so that has been set for us. Uh, we just have to <laughs> pass Black Street. <laughs> Good God, um, uh, guys! If you're listening to the audio version of the podcast for the first time, subscribe to us. Hit the follow button. Hit the like button. Whatever platform you listen to on, oh my God, the button's different for every platform. There's nothing in unison in the world of podcasting, which is so aggravating. But we're on Apple Podcasts. We're on Spotify. We're on Google Podcasts. We're on Deezer. We're on TuneIn. We're on Radio Public. We're on a ton of different stuff. So wherever you listen to, hit the subscribe button, and you get notified when a new beautiful plate of ear food is here for your ear holes. You're welcome. No. <laughs> Brody, hit us with the deals. <laughs> uh, for Nintendo Switch, you can get Undertale for $9.99 on the US eShop. On Xbox, you can get No Man's Sky for $19.99 through Amazon. And on PlayStation 4, you can get Rage 2 for $19.99 through the once thought dead Gamefly. But it also <laughs> gives you free shipping. <laughs> The once thought dead. <laughs> this just in, we've I've discovered that Gamefly is not dead. It is not dead. You heard your first. Apparently, Australia might be real. Jury's still out on that one. A, a what? Australia might be real. Oh, God, I thought you said, I'll show you. I'll show like, you. What, <laughs> what website is that? Oh, it's I'll show you, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Good Lord. Um, well, guys, uh, it is the first Friday show of the month, which means that we have a Diggity Radar. For those who don't know, because you've got some new listeners, definitely, from last month, uh, Diggity Radar is where we showcase an indie game that's up and coming. Um, uh, it, I mean, it's usually an indie game that a lot of people aren't talking about um, or isn't really in the limelight, but it's something that we found. Um, and this month's in, uh, Diggity Re- Radar is uh, titled Unrailed, uh, which is a co-op multiplayer game where you have to work together with your friends to build a train track across endless procedurally uh, procedurally generated worlds, uh, master random encounters with its inhabitants, upgrade your train and keep from derailing. Uh, the developer on this is Indoor Astronaut. The publisher is Daedalic Entertainment and Bli- Good Dave. God. Blib blibbly Blib- blibbly i think <laughs> i don't know exactly uh the platform is that this is going to be on is steam and the release date is its early access is starting on september 9th uh this thing looks kick-ass um yeah. and I, I just happenstance came across this um because i you know generally at the end of august or the end of the month before it's we start we basically go hey let's take a look at some games and i found this thing and I mean, it looks like a great party game. I can't wait for this to come to like a console. I think it is. Uh, also, I, I think it's just coming to Steam because that's probably the easier place to do early access. But I yeah. know he's or the, some of the developers have been involved with uh, the ID at Xbox stuff. So I assume eventually this will be coming to consoles. Uh, and I can't wait for it to come to consoles because this looks awesome. It does look like a fantastic drunk party game. One of yes. those where you me and our wives are going to be all screaming at each other by the end of it (laughs) which is generally speaking one of the metrics you do in scoring an indie an indie radar title that's right Uh, how can we get drunk drunk? (laughs) and can we get drunk still operate this game and how fun would it be that's right yeah no this this definitely looks awesome go go check out the trailer and uh if you play on steam maybe pick this up or uh give these guys some love yeah sweet uh so nintendo has teased the new nintendo switch experience uh this this comes one day 
after the Nintendo Direct that happened this week. And uh, Nintendo gave a first look of some sort of new game that encourages movement, kind of similar to their Wii Fit and things like that. Uh, so the new peripheral appears to be a Pilates ring with a holster <laughs> for a Joy-Con. Uh, and it also has a- mm. another holster that straps onto your leg so you can put another Joy-Con there. Only one leg, which I guess makes sense at this point. Uh, but the content of the game has yet to be revealed. Everything that has been showed so far is literally just people doing weird stuff um, <laughs> with no screen or anything to show what is going on and why they are doing these odd things uh but supposedly we're going to be getting a little bit more about this on september 12th uh there was an exact time but uh september 12th be on the lookout for something else strange from nintendo do you have an absolute undying need and wish to perform pilates in 2019 absolutely not I have never had that wish. Not 2019, not 2018, yeah. certainly not 2017. I mean, I, <laughs> I, I like the video too. The video I'm watching the video again. The video is like right from the get-go. They go, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, I mean, it, it literally looks like it is just some sort of a... It's just a ring. It's like a ring that is flexible and it bends and you can do it's a rubber stuff. ring. Yeah. I mean, it is kind of smart because they basically, I mean, it's it's a ring that holds the joy cons in and you see people use it like a steering wheel. You see people use it like a bow and arrow because it's got the flexibility, but I don't know. I don't, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting. It, I don't know if it's, it's really the, uh, it's something. It is very Nintendo. I yeah. Mean. I mean, I guess it, 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 it brings a switch back into nursing homes like the Wii was. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, this is, this is kind of Nintendo's realm. This is, this is what they do. So sure. Have at it. it this is weird, dude. <laughs> it is very weird. I didn't even know it was a Pilates ring until somebody said, I saw it in a comment. I had no, no idea what it was. I thought it was just something they came up with, but apparently it's a, the same thing as a Pilates ring. I'm watching what appears to be a man that looks like he's from Florida, Georgia, or yeah, Florida, Georgia line. <laughs> like the area or the band? The band thrust his <laughs> thrust his junk in Giant the air with the ring on top up. of it. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it's uh, it's something. It's Nintendo. Yeah. Well, we'll have to see what it is. What do you think the price is of a rubber ring? Uh, at least uh, seventy nine ninety nine. You think it's gonna be eighty dollars for a rubber ring and a thigh strap? I'm sorry. Have you have you seen the toy cons? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. It's gonna be eighty bucks. It'll be a game and and the peripheral together. That's why they'll get eighty bucks out of it. Jesus. I mean, they sold one two switch for sixty fucking dollars. So yeah, yeah. I, I'd actually be surprised if it was eighty dollars and it wasn't higher. Kind of disappointed that the uh, Wii baseball bat peripheral didn't make a. Oh, yeah <laughs> good god oh that, no that yeah, bad boy had penetrated now. some tvs oh my gosh the um all the third party shit that's gonna get built for this thing now yeah oh uh, yeah i'm sure there'll be some things some th weird I'm, there's gonna be just a mass influx of just plastic shit that gets built for this thing that you just put it inside of <laughs> it's God, I was really hoping this wouldn't happen, but I don't know. Maybe I'm oh, assuming we're going to get some sort of a Wii Fit. Yeah, that's pretty much what I assume this is. I mean, that, you know, maybe you stand on your Switch <laughs> and it weighs you. <laughs> you Use your Switch like a baseball breaks. bat as well. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> moving on, guys, you got some Game Pass updates. So some of these we have already covered, but they're a little more fleshed out now uh the game's coming in september september 5th you got dead souls uh just coming to console and pc uh you got metal gear solid hd edition uh which is coming to console uh or sorry two and three just coming to console you got creature in the well coming to console and pc uh september 6 september 6 also gears 5 ultimate edition launches console and pc also x game also only exclusive to xbox game pass ultimate members for september 6 
it gets a little confusing with all the SKUs of Game Pass, <laughs> but you know, whatever. Uh, yeah. For those who are just regular Xbox Game Pass members, September 10th is your chance to play Gears 5 on console and PC. Uh, September 12th, you've got Enter the Gungeon on console and PC. Uh, Goner Blueberry Edition, awesome, console and PC. Uh, and to be announced uh, for the dates in September, you got Bad North Jatoon Edition coming to PC um, and also Shadow Warrior 2 coming to PC. Games leaving us from Game Pass in September. September 4th is your last chance to play Onrush, so it's gone. Shit. September 6th, um, Lego Batman 2, Joyride Turbo, Explosion Man, and The Maw are leaving. September 30th, Lego Indiana Jones, Shantae Half Genie Hero, uh, Split Second, Ninja Gaiden Black, The Hunter Call of the Wild are all leaving September 30th. So, I mean, I don't, not really big losses in my mind i mean everyone's got their games that they love but uh, uh not the biggest I, losses my kids play a lot of the the lego games and yeah. i don't remember if i own lego batman 2 or if i had it from game pass but one way or another i have it right now i think i own it because i think it was a free game at some point in time with games with gold but not a hundred percent so that's the only one i'm kind of like eh, that's not good because i think my kids play that <laughs> some tears will be shed from children yeah that is thank possible thank you so much thanks Microsoft. xbox you're gonna yeah. <laughs> you're gonna make my kids cry uh, <laughs> so plants vs zombies battle for neighborville has officially been announced uh, a couple weeks ago i think it was two maybe three weeks ago we had a, a leak of a trailer that um was for this new upcoming plants vs zombies game uh so the official trailer was really showing off some new features for the series. And uh, the the first, sorry, the first new feature for this is uh, new social hubs. So this is where you'll meet friends, make new allies and customize your characters. Uh, there will be split screen co-op in every single mode. Uh, there will be new team play classes, which are basically two characters all kind of rolled up into one. Uh, and they allow you to join up with a friend and play as one unit. So the first one is Oak and Acorn, which is a tree with an acorn on top that both have separate attacks and are each controlled by one player. And the second one that they showed off are Cadets, and they look like three little uh, zombies kind of uh, flying around in these like spaceship-looking things, and they form together to make a space station. Uh, so that's interesting. Um, <laughs> I because why the hell not? <laughs> yeah, this uh, uh, IP has been stretched. Yes, it has. Uh, other new characters: '80s action hero. That's his name. Uh, a zombie that has a bow and arrow and bad one-liners. Uh, Snapdragon, a plant that shoots seeking fireballs. Uh, electric slide is another zombie that has various different electric attacks. Uh, in the the, both of the zombies characters seem to be very 80s themed. I mean, obviously, you got 80s action hero there. But uh, then the other plant that they showed off is Nightcap, uh, which is a plant that plays similarly to kind of like a rogue class from MMOs or RPGs where he kind of disappears and can bounce around the map and whatnot. Uh, there will be 12 different unique maps. Uh, there will be some modes that allow you to play up to 24 players for some of the, the team battles and stuff. And there will be a large free roam area with quests, secrets, and mini games. And it sounded like a ton of other weird and plants versus zombie type or style stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, st I'm stoked for Oak and Acorn. I mean, and, yeah, uh, could that I, it's cool. nice to see that there's, you know, a, 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 a co-op yeah. character, which is kind of neat. Yeah, I think uh, my kids play quite a bit of Plants Oh my god, kids love well. these games, dude. And, and and it's I honestly they're really not bad games. They're pretty no, good games for pretty what good they games. are. I don't I don't personally get into them too much. I'll play them with the kids and stuff, but nothing nothing crazy. But yeah, this is this is going to make Activision or uh sorry, EA a ton a of money. A ton of money. And I, I can't believe how far they've been able to go with this IP, too. I mean, it's been... Oh, it, it started out as a pretty simple mobile game, and here we Tower are. Tower Defense, yeah. yeah. Tower Defense mobile app, and now here we are. Crazy. Crazy. Um, All right, guys. On to the meat of this show. The Nintendo Direct happened uh, yesterday, 
And before we jump into news of it, we tried to live react it, um, but uh, fuck you, Comcast. Basically, um, my internet joust him, joust him. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna joust Comcast now. Who's the CEO of Comcast? Find me. Um, but anyways, I'll, I'll let you know. Sweet. Uh, we tried. <laughs> And uh, we were just having some massive internet issues. And by the time we had done it, Brian um, L. Roberts, Brian L. Roberts, please report joust. to Indiana to joust Jeff. Please, please <laughs> report to the nearest medieval times close to my vicinity and let's joust. Um, <laughs> yeah, we had problems. I mean, I had upgraded my internet and uh, like a, the day after I upgraded my internet, uh, we had issues and then we had issues again. And now we don't have issues. Um, but it was it was brutal. I mean, it was like I was talking like through someone's asshole to Brody, and was there terrible. was there was no way we could record that. Um, did uh, did they get a pretty pretty good call from an angry Canadian? Uh, here's the thing: when you call Comcast, they don't give a fuck. No, they so, get angry people calling in there all the time. So when you call, I mean, to be angry right off the bat, it doesn't get you anywhere. No. So, and it's not like I was talking nice. I was just kind of like, hey, my internet's down. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, here we fucking are again. Um, but it's my only choice Yeah, in the uh, apartment complex I live in, which blows. So can't wait till I move in like February, March. I can get a different choice. But anyways, Comcast, fix your shit, please. Good God. Um, I bet they don't. <laughs> <laughs> bet they don't bitch just saying <laughs> anyway yeah. uh yeah. Under, under the news for the nintendo direct so there was a crap ton of news in this nintendo direct and pretty cool stuff um yeah it was a good one i was gonna read through this i mean a lot of this is gonna be dates uh with little point form notes into it it's long but here we go um uh, first big piece of news overwatch is coming to the switch super stoked about that they're adding uh gyro controls to it um, that's available October 15th. And I, I was pretty pumped about seeing that. I don't know about you. I know you've got a little bit of disdain towards Overwatch right now, but I think it's going to be great on the Switch. <laughs> We're taking a break. Uh, we're seeing other games. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think it's going to be great on the Switch. It will. Um, little concerned about like the triggers and stuff like that. And yeah. like, uh, but if everyone else is on a Switch, we're good. I, I um, don't, I don't know if I'd, uh, I'd play it mobile, but I don't know, man. It, it, I, I really like having like a pro controller and Xbox controller for games like this personally. I mean, it might be one of those you set up on a kickstand and grab a pro controller. That's what I was something. thinking. I was thinking I don't think I'd for, play handheld. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking of for um for when I travel, like mm-hmm. on a plane, just set the kickstand up, have the pro controller and uh just rip a little bit of Overwatch while I'm waiting in the lounge or in the on the plane yeah so that's what I'm, I'm i'm stoked for um we got some new stuff for luigi's mansion 3 um uh, they showed did off you give the a... date on overwatch did you say yeah that? sorry october um 15th. i'll give it again october 15th um which i is got distracted super close <laughs> i was not expecting that long so they no. kept it under wraps for a decent period of time until like what a week amazon. ago when we announced the <laughs> fucking case amazon slipped up whoops whoops um <laughs> but anyways yeah luigi mansion 3 got shown off um they showed off a few of the distinct designs for each four um so one of them is uh screen park that's um, a special mode sorry. yeah sorry um which is uh, a party mode uh which is kind of odd it's like a mario party within luigi's mansion 3 not complaining just no not really expecting that. Um, so you have uh, Team Luigi versus Team Gooigi, which obviously the obvious choice is Gooigi well, um, to take uh, in various different mini games. Um, and they didn't really go that hard into them. I mean, it just kind of looked like um, like a two v two match with the vacuums. There yeah, was I, some I, like shoot shit through other stuff and get points, and it was I, a little interesting. I think you could get up to four v four, is what okay. I saw on there. But yeah, it they didn't show much. It was just. A couple of them. I assume there's more than that. I mean, from what they showed, it didn't seem like that was enough to make up a full game mode. Yeah. So I would assume there's definitely more, but uh, uh, this is probably going to be one of the last times we see this before it comes out, considering it comes out at the end of October. So Yeah. Uh, there was a dance floor area. Disco yeah. dance floor area. Also dis- there. And like an Egypt. For a second. Yeah. And like an Egypt. Egypt area. Yeah. yeah. Like a room. 
Mm -hmm. that's yeah, just, each you're each, in Egypt, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, but there's a full blown pyramid there, you know, because that makes sense. But hey, Luigi's Mansion. Yeah, Ooh. um, and then there was uh, a Kirby game that they showed off that was a free to start, which is free to play. It's just they call it free to start, which I think is a little bit more honest. Yeah. Um, a Kirby game called uh, Super Kirby Clash, which is an up to four player boss fights. Uh, you have over 100 quests, and the game can be played solo on one system, wirelessly connected with other switches, or online. And that's actually available right now. Um, I have not been able to dive into that. Um, I haven't touched it yet. Might this weekend just to just get a glance at it. I'm, I mean, it's free to play Nintendo, so I'm assuming it's or free to start Nintendo. So I'm, I'm they're usually a little more like, okay, I'm going to have to pay for this eventually. Yeah. Yeah, you know, Nintendo like does a good really job of getting you. Stuff. Yeah, they they do a pretty good job of getting you a good chunk there that you can enjoy for free, and then after that, you pretty much have to pay to advance. Yeah, uh, and then we saw the Trials of Mana remake. Uh, they showed that off, which looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, it's completely redone with all new graphics, and that'll be available April twenty fourth, twenty twenty. Um, moving on from that, we got Return of the Obra Dinn, which showed off some gameplay from this pretty artistic game where it's black and white with like dot, like comic book shading, I guess you want to call it. Um, and that's available fall 2019. Uh, I'm probably not going to get the game because I got a headache just looking at it. Uh, <laughs> that's not an insult. It's definitely it's beautiful. a very certain yeah, I think group of people. Yeah. I think it's really cool the way it's done, but I could not follow it with my eyes, um, which probably means I need to get my eyes checked. Damn it. Uh, awesome. Little town hero was shown off from game freak, which are the makers of Pokemon. Um, there's, uh, it's a pretty interesting looking game, very Pokemon esque, obviously. Um, but there's a unique battle system where you move around the map to get support from townspeople and it requires you to strategically plan, uh, certain moves during certain times to successfully win. Um, unlike, you know, Pokemon where you just my turn, your turn, my but turn, your mash turn. tackle until you, <laughs> the other one dies. Yeah. Sorry. Blacks out. Blacks out. <laughs> My bad. Politically correct. Well, blacks out. I mean, depending on what generation later on, you get into whites out instead of blacks out. And... Yeah. Good God. Um, all of the music in the game was composed by the creator of Undertale, Toby Fox. And that will actually be available October 16th, which is quite a surprise because this is under wraps for a long time. And we thought this was going to be like more of a 2020 title. Um, and they came out with a date and we're like, wow, holy crap. Yeah, they it's great briefly announced it in a direct last year and then they talked about it one more time and that's when they told us it was going to be called little town hero and we saw like 20 seconds of it and then now all of a sudden it's coming out next month it's like, okay <laughs> there you go. all righty then uh we got some super smash brother news also that banjo kazooie is now available to play the fourth character uh in this fighter pass is also terry bogard from fatal fury and will be available sometime in november uh there are more dlc fighters in development beyond the first pa fighters pass also um so great news for super smash brothers new shit constantly coming to that which is fantastic and supposedly this wasn't in the direct but supposedly uh home run is coming back the home run um mode oh fantastic yeah, hopefully I want, a, I want the target mode from Melee where they all had their own individual thing. I, I know there's so, so many characters and that would be yeah, a pain in the ass. But even if you just bring back the, the old maps, that's fine. I just loved that mode so much. Oh, well, that's great about the home run stuff. I never even yeah. thought about it. I do miss that. Uh, we got some more information on Link's Awakening. So pretty much got more gameplay and showed the uh, Chamber Dungeons uh, featured off a bit more. Um, this will be coming September 20th, and a new Link's Awakening Amiibo will launch on that same day as well. So um, I'm probably going to pick up Link's Awakening. Um, I am 100% picking up Link's Awakening. <laughs> yeah, it looks great, and uh, I can't wait to play it. Super stoked on that. Um, you got uh, Dragon Quest. Is this ZS? 11. 11. 11. Oh, God. God. Damn it. Roman numerals. <laughs> they get you every time. Uh, Dragon Quest 11S Echoes of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition. If the title isn't long enough, go fuck yourself. Uh, more <laughs> gameplay showing off the 2D <laughs> and 3D graphics of this title. Uh, there's free DLC called the Champions Pack. which will be available the day the game launches, which is on September 27th. And a reminder that there's a free demo available in the eShop right now with roughly 8 to 10 hours of gameplay that will transfer to the full game if you purchase it. So, um, fantastic demo. I mean, that's a great length for a demo. You can really 
blow some time on that. Yeah. And, and uh, the game is disgustingly long in itself. So you don't have to worry about doing eight to 10 hours. And then it's like 120 hours long. Yeah. Yeah. You definitely don't have to worry about doing eight to 10 hours of the demo, purchasing the game, and then being like, well, I've already played 10 hours of the game, Jeff. Well, guess right. what? There's still 170 hours of this shit. So go get it. <laughs> um, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, Sharp, F E Encore. Because again, if the title is too long, go fuck yourself. <laughs> uh, Fire Emblem meets Shin, <laughs> Shin Megami Tensei, essentially. Um, Brody Which is like this. Persona, by the way. Yeah. Uh, if Brody you have never this. played Shin Megami. Um, this is a port of a game for the Wii U uh, with more characters and features, and this will be available January 17th, 2020. Uh, so that's great. I also didn't know this was a port until I started reading through comments and stuff. And yeah, apparently this was on the Wii U. This just brings more. Um, but this, it was one of those games that I was, I, it was not at all what I wanted, but I'm probably still going to pick it up anyway. <laughs> Well, hey, because I love I love Fire Emblem and I love like Persona and Shin Megami Tensei and stuff. So anything that was on the Wii U is now a new game. This is true. That was a, a dead console. So, yep. Nobody uh, had it. We got a look at Deadly Premonition 2, A Blessing in Disguise, which is a massive nope for me. Um, it's an investigation of a serial killer opens the door to the supernatural world. Uh, this will be available 2020. And Deadly Premonition Origins, the original game in the series, launching on the eShop today. So if you want some horror games, I mean, obviously we're coming around that time of Halloween. Get on it. Uh, yep. Divinity Original Sin 2 was shown off. Uh, showed off some gameplay and announced that the game is available now. So hey. there you go. Hey, um, we saw a look at Doom 64, which is awesome. Uh, they showed gameplay and announced that it'll be released on November 22nd. Um, that's awesome. Uh, Rogue Company, uh, which is a new IP, uh, is a multiplayer game that has various characters with certain abilities. Uh, each mercenary is fully customizable. And that'll also be available in 2020. Uh, we got more news and details on Pokemon Sword and Shield as we're coming up on the release soon, which is crazy. Um Basically, there's customization mode where there's more options than ever before, including makeup, hair, and more. So that's kind of neat. Uh, Pokemon Camp, you can now camp at any point. It allows you to play with your Pokemon, growing your bond, and improving their ability in battle in the wild area. You can visit other players' camps. Really wish there was a forest fire ability. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, curry on rice. Uh, there's over 100 different types of curry. And we assume here at Diggity that you give this to Pokemon to boost stats and other foods, uh, as you did in other previous games. But if this is just you eating 100 different types of fucking curry. <laughs> just because. Um, I mean, it did show you. I don't know character. if we should have really directed programming time to this, if that's the case. Yeah. But, you know, whatever. Uh, well, why? Uh, <laughs> we also got uh, a look at uh, two new uh uh, Pokemon, which you had uh, Poltergeist, which is a ghost type tea kettle. Poltergeist. Oh, yeah, that's right. Sorry, Poltergeist. <laughs> uh, Play on words, man. Good God. Play this on words. A, uh, ghost type tea kettle and uh, Cremorant Missile, which is a flying water type bird that has an exclusive ability called Gulp. When they announced the Cremorant Missile, by the way, I thought like it was going to be like crematory ashes it's, that are it's, thrown in the face of another book <laughs> yeah kramer the the his exclusive abilities gulp missile that went to the other or went to the next line and it looked like it was all one word there oh yeah um but yeah yeah kramer uh, missile would have been great if it that's was, a was fantastic like in, name that's a metal was, band name right there <laughs> kramer missile <laughs> just hair whip to that um it'd be also awesome if they made i mean they really we've made our own pokemon here at diggity called kramer missile which is actually just an urn of dead people's ashes that's thrown in another pokemon wow and confuses them that's still not the darkest thing in the pokemon series either so no when when do we get a curry pokemon <laughs> it's got to be in there somewhere you can feed your curry Pokemon curry on rice. Oh God! A hundred so different it kinds of curry. Own kind? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's cannibalistic. It's fine. Oh, God. All right, buddy, you take <laughs> over from here, dude. The SNES is finally coming to Nintendo Switch Online. Um, so for now, there's 20 games, and there will be more coming in the future. So the starting lineup is Brawl Brothers, 
Breath of Fire, Demon's Crest, F Zero, Joe and Mac Two, Lost in the Tropics, uh, Kirby's Dream Course, Kirby's Dream Land Three, Pilot Wings, Star Fox, St- Stunt Race FX, Super EDF Earth Defense Force, Super Ghouls and Ghosts, Super Mario Kart, Super Mario World, Woo! Super Mario World Two, Yoshi's Island, Yeah, Super Metroid, Super Poyo Poyo Two. Super soccer, <laughs> super tennis. <laughs> I'm sick of saying super. Uh, and the last one is The Legend of Zelda, A Link to the Past. So all of the games will have a re- rewind function. So if you uh, fuck up that jump, you can go back and redo it there, little Timmy. Uh, available now on the Nintendo Switch for online members. And the SNES controller is also coming soonish. Uh, it will be available exclusively through Nintendo's website and will only be available to NSO members. So you will have to sign into your account. Uh, it is charged by USB-C and will not attach to the side of your Switch um, like the uh, NES controllers, and it will be twenty nine ninety nine. And uh, so this is awesome. Finally, it's here. Not a bad price for the controller. No, that's Both actually very that, reasonable. Yeah. Also, yeah. the um, do you think we'll ever see N64 stuff on the Switch? I mean, obviously, the, the N64 Classic would have to launch first, right? And then... Yeah, and then be yeah, like you don't want to cannibalize your own thing. Because what the SNES Classic has been out for two years? Uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I guess it would have been. Wow, 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 wow. Uh, so Tetris ninety eight nine is getting an update. Uh, the first mode that it is getting is called Invictus. Uh, this is only available for Tetris Maximus winners. Uh, I've never even won a game of Tetris 99, so that's not for me. That's for the best of the best, and you guys can have that. Uh, there will also be daily missions that are being added. These will give tickets to exchange for themes uh so you can get like a zelda theme and mario themes and things like that uh there will be new player icons coming uh there will also be a second wave of paid dlc uh the first thing the paid dlc brings the way it was worded is kind of weird this seems like something that would be a free update but apparently it's part of the dlc uh so you can play two play share battle mode which is two players against each other and computer opponents so you still get your 99 players but uh 97 of them are computers and local arena where you can play up to eight player local wireless battles. Uh, there will also be a new package version of the game available today. And this comes with the game, which is free to play all of the DLC and a 12 month subscription to Nintendo switch online. So that's not bad. That's not too bad. Uh, and I think it comes in, it probably comes in around 30 bucks, which your months or your, 12 month subscription is already 20 bucks. So that's not bad at all. Uh, so Mario and Sonic at the Olympic games, 2020, they showed off some gum- gameplay featuring, uh, 10 retro style 2d events. Uh, the game will also have new mini games, unlockable characters and a story mode. The game will release on November 5th. Uh, Damon X machina prologue demo. Uh, so this allows you to play the beginning of the game and All progress will transfer over to the full game if you so choose to buy it. Uh, It will support up to four-player co-op that can be played wirelessly or online. The demo is available now, and the full game will be launching on September 13th. Uh, Star Wars Jedi Knight 2, Jedi Outcast. Uh, So not a whole lot here. This was like 20 seconds of the entire Direct. They just showed (laughs) some gameplay of it, and it's just a port. Um doesn't look like they've really done much to it either and it will be coming out on september 24th <coughs> uh and then the next thing they had was kind of a, a real short little not even really a montage it was just three games in a in a short little clip here where they had uh the witcher 3 wild hunt uh complete edition just basically reiterating this is coming out october 15th and showing it off on the switch because I, good god i can't believe they even got it to run on the switch uh, Assassin's Creed Rebel Collection, which this is something from our Tuesday show that was leaked. Hey. And uh, so this includes Black Flag and Rogue all in one pack. Uh, it will release on December 6th. Uh, and it features all past DLC for these games, as well as adding touch controls and motion aiming. And then the last one they showed off was Dauntless, which is coming soon. 
I'm concerned about how this is going to run because it doesn't run <laughs> well on my original Xbox One. So it's free to play. Give it a shot. Um, and then they get another new montage. Uh, this one was the the quicker 20-second clips or so. Uh, so they showed off Just Dance 2020, which is coming November 5th. Grid Auto Sport, which is coming September 19th. Farming Simulator 20, which Woo. is coming December 3rd. Uh, Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch yes. is coming September 20th, which I'll finally pick up and play. <laughs> Uh, NBA 2K20 is coming September 6th. Call of Cthulhu is coming October 8th. The Outer Wilds. Oh, man. This one always messes yeah, me up. I always want to say Outer Wilds. Outer Worlds is coming soon. <laughs> I am slightly concerned the port for this is not going well. Um, Devil May Cry 2 is coming September 19th. And Vampire is coming October 29th. Uh, we got some more Animal Crossing uh, New Horizons gameplay. Yeah. Kind of showing off some of the systems there. So they have a completely redone crafting system where uh, you can craft like a crappy shovel and then you can use that <laughs> shovel to get a better shovel. <laughs> Stuff like that. Um, Minecraft. But the, yeah, essentially is all it is. You're collecting things around the world and using them to make other things. Uh, there's various new tools like the pole vault, which you can use to get over rivers and gaps, uh, a shovel, an axe, other things like that. Minecraft, uh, four player local multiplayer with up to eight players online or connected wirelessly, uh, which they're really seeming to push that uh, wireless connectivity, which is cool. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But uh, new customization options, uh, camp management, so you can go through, completely organize your camp, make it look however you want, cool things like that. And there will be seasonal changes, weather changes, and time of day changes to make the world feel a little bit more alive. And finally, the last thing they had was Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. So they're remastering the game from Wii and pretty much completely rebuilt this game. It looks gorgeous. And uh, it's coming sometime in 2020. And they actually did not have a, a one more thing at the end of this direct. The the Xenoblade was it, and they called her yeah. quits. And on to, to the, the next uh, one, man. On to the next one. So the next uh, one more thing is going to be in uh, the one in October, right? Is what we discussed or November? Uh, probably. I think it was November or December. So but I think it was November. I'm just going to flat out say it. I was pretty shocked at how much stuff we got in this direct. This thing was jam packed. There was, was a lot in there. Like you know, a ten minute session on just Smash and all that kind of stuff. But they had so yeah. much stuff to fit in here. It's incredible. Um, some great news. I mean, Overwatch obviously is a big one for me. It's nice to see some new Animal Crossing stuff. Um, kind of cool to see Tetris ninety nine uh, still yeah, moving I'm glad on. They're still supporting it. Uh, Pokemon Sword and Shield continues to make me question uh, Pokemon. <laughs> and uh, Link's Awakening looks beautiful as ever. Little stunned about Little Town Hero. And um, yeah, I mean, I, I thought it overall was a great direct. I mean, I didn't think it was... Uh, I thought it was great. I thought it was a, a, a good direct. Not, yeah. not a waste of time. And it's, you know, all the games in there were great. Um, I'm kind of hoping that the next one that they go over... Um, obviously we'll see that peripheral, but I'm hoping that we also see like a, a new switch, like a new design. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping also that we see like some software updates to the UI. Um, I just want themes. themes. Yeah. I just want themes. <laughs> <laughs> I just want, dude, even themes could be like, just change the fucking background. I just want red. I don't even just care. Let me make it red or green. I don't care. I just, I'd love to something. see like Link's Awakening background with like a volcano and then it's That'd got like golden awesome. like hylian you know um glyphs or whatever for frames and gold around the around the ui for your boxes that'd be fantastic but it it'll never fucking so happen so many cool themes it'll never happen so many it'll never happen <sighs> And Good it was God. such a, a prominent part of the 3DS, too. You would think it'd be like a, a given that that was going to be on sure the Switch. I'm sure they made a good amount of money on that. Oh, I'm sure. I even bought two, I think. I bought a couple of them, and I didn't even have my 2DS all that long. It'd be just great for pre-order stuff for DLC. I'm sure it would get oh, people yeah. to, hey, Are you, you using know? gold coins on it or the Nintendo coins and shit? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like the Nintendo Online Rewards or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Huh. Yeah, I was excited to see Overwatch, even though I go back and forth on that game. I think it is a fantastic game to have on the Switch. Uh, Little Town Hero, I don't know, man. I don't, I don't think that's my cup of tea. I think I'm going to stay away from that one. Uh, the, I'm super excited about the Super Smash Bros. stuff. The fact that I, I don't, I don't, I are, sorry, I never played Fatal Fury, so I don't really know anything about Terry Bogard, but cool for fans of that series. Banjo was awesome didn't expect him to be out this soon after we just got hero uh link's awakening awesome tokyo mirage sessions awesome i'll play it it looks weird i'll play it anyway uh pokemon <laughs> i'm with you i don't this game's gonna be strange man uh curry kirby <laughs> no curry. Uh, oh, curry curry I was like, well, I was looking at the SNES. I was I get ahead of myself. Uh SNES, super stoked to have that finally. And um yeah, man. I, I I'm actually kind of excited to play Xenoblade Chronicles. I never got to play it on the Wii. Just wasn't really my my thing at the time. So mm. uh, I'll go back and play that for sure. But overall, I think it was a really good direct. What I'm what I'm hoping for too with the SNES stuff is that they're like organized better. Yeah, like I would like to have a square where when I click it, I can click between NES or SNES. I yeah, I, it's a I, little I, all over the place right now. I get what they're doing with it. It makes it look mm-hmm. like there's a lot of games because there is, but I don't. I haven't crowded. looked uh, since they added the SNES. I haven't seen what it looks like yet. But uh, supposedly, you're going to be able to start filtering things. Okay. From what I'm hearing, that That's you'll be good. able to filter it by like year it came out and and you know. Oh, nice. So hopefully that that cleans it up a little bit. Sweet. But well, and to uh, close this episode out, we're gonna do a or I finally have beaten control. Yeah. Uh, so I am ready to do a review. Credits have rolled. Uh, I did not let the completionist side of me get the best of me though. Um, there's still stuff I could be doing in the game. Uh, after you roll credits, there it kind of opens it up and gives you a little bit more there. But uh, definitely, how, how many hours? So, uh, I total. I didn't do a great job of tracking it. And actually, this is one of the few games that uh, Xbox doesn't actually track it. It says there's no stats if you go to check it, because <laughs> I that's why I didn't track it because I assumed I could just go in there and look at the end of it. And turns out I can't. Uh, but I'm guessing it was roughly somewhere between eight to ten hours. I think that's about what I had. I think I could probably get another couple hours out of it pretty easily, just going around and doing some of the stuff they have at the end. I'm not gonna say what because I don't want to give away any spoilers. But so, uh, so wait, how many time? Uh, like, what would you guesstimate for what? For hours played. Oh, I said eight. Probably oh, roughly eight to you ten. Yeah. Right. yeah, I think you popped out there. For I me. just realized you're wearing a Steelers shirt, and I dislike you a little bit now. Um, so here's my deal. <laughs> um, I got sick, and I thought I was going to throw up. I oh, yeah, that's a good on. throw up shirt. And I <laughs> got this shirt for free in a 2-4 of Bud Light. And really I decided going to hold on to it <laughs> and just wear it when... Uh, I feel like for those who don't know, my team is the Seahawks. Um, and I'm a Ravens uh, fan, and that's and I, why I dislike his shirt. And I also, I mean, I cheer on the the Colts too, but yeah, you know, a little uh, harder this year. So, anyway, uh, this is my first control, or sorry, my first remedy game, which remedy is the, the team behind this game. Uh, it was, I know they get pretty artsy with their games and, and, really kind of get out there with some of them, especially on the supernatural side. Uh, and this, this is no exception to that. Uh, this is very, very supernatural based and it is very, um, very crazy. Uh, what's it, it close to like other games? Like what any other remedy game? I mean, it, it, <laughs> seriously though. I mean, it, yeah. it, I haven't played any of them, but I've seen them. Um, uh, Quantum Break was probably pretty similar in a way. Mm-hmm. I mean, they didn't do the long, like almost show cutscenes in there where they were yeah, like yeah, 20 yeah. minutes long, but uh, it, it's very similar to, I guess, Control. I mean, the, it, it's it's just more of a remedy game, I think. Uh, but you can tell they're progressing. I think this is definitely probably the better one. I know a lot of people love Alan Wake and things like that, but uh, this. This is, it was a really, 
I, I, I did enjoy my time with the game. It was good. So first off, I wanted to start off with the story. Uh, I think the story was very well done. I thought it was presented in an interesting way that was not kind of your typical uh, run of the mill because they could have the sort story in itself is not a complicated story, but the way it was presented was uh, very well done. And it, it, it wasn't, you know, just you know, a copy and paste sort of thing. Uh, and it did a lot of cool things where like, uh, as the story progresses, things change in the environment, which made for some interesting things like, uh, portraits on the wall would change and like just weird stuff. Like people would already know who your character is by the time you get there, which doesn't make any sense at all, given the logistics of everything. Uh, but the story, Overall, I don't think it overstayed its welcome. I don't think it was too simple. I think it was probably just about right. Uh, Graphics-wise, it was a really nice-looking game. It, it did a lot of cool things. Um, the enemy types are not overly crazy. They don't, they're don't. they not anything unique, really. I think a lot of them looked very much the same, and there's a lot of the same enemies throughout the entire game. So uh, you see a lot of them, but... Uh, graphic wise I, I i think the quality of graphics was there i think it was very well done the the motion caption for face movements and things was wasn't too bad it, it, it some of that stuff just looks off to me still even in this time you know it, they've gotten so much better than what they've ever been but it still felt a little off to me but i don't think that's really anything too bizarre uh the actual i mean the the main character is modeled off of a real life human being and it looks identical. I mean, they did a bang up job on that. Nice. Uh, audio wise. I, they knocked it out of the park, man. The whole game has very ominous sounds throughout it to give this really creepy tone. And I mean, it, the game is, doesn't get you really with jump scares, but it creates this feeling like there could be a jump scare at all times. And there, there's a few of them in there, but I, overall just the audio engineering on this was just, incredible i think they did an, an amazing job on that uh gameplay wise I, I last week when i did my first impressions I, I said it was challenging uh there are times when it is challenging but it's not too bad uh at the time i had not really upgraded anything uh so once i did finally do the upgrades that helped a ton uh the last mission or so or the last yeah, the last mission was pretty tough. It, it kicked my ass a little bit, and I had to play through it a few times and almost gave up for the night and was going to return to it, but I powered through and got her done. Um, and really, overall, the the feeling of throwing things and the and the shooting of the gun, the, gu the guns don't feel overly powerful, um, which is nice because they want you to rely on you know throwing things at enemies and creating this, this sense of tension. Um, and I, I think everything that is there gameplay wise is great. I, I think overall it, it works very well for what they're trying to do. You can, I mean, you can fly, you can do all sorts of different things and it, it really gives you this feeling of growing more powerful as the story continues. Uh, and there's a million collectibles in this game. I, I don't really know what the exact number is, but they are, everywhere i i know there's an, an achievement for collecting 120 of them so i mean they're absolutely everywhere and the but they don't feel forced where you have to go way off the beaten path to get to um the the main story missions will give you some upgrades and stuff but there's a lot of side missions that you can do in order to get more points to upgrade uh some of your abilities and things and i really didn't get into those so i mean Gameplay wise, if you just wanted to play it for the story, you could definitely power through it and get her done. Uh, performance wise, this is where this game takes a major hit for me. Uh, on Xbox, this ran terribly. Anytime you would open a menu, uh, when you would come out of the menu, it would just completely freeze up for a few seconds and then finally start back up. I mean, it was just the frame rate drops were awful. And, and this is on the OG Xbox, right? Right, but I'm also, from what I'm hearing, there are the same issues on PlayStation 4 Pro and Xbox oh, wow. One X. I, I've heard them all across Ooh. the board. Console, it just does not run well. Uh, on PC, I've heard you can get it to run pretty decently if you have a pretty good rig. But um, mm. yeah, the, the frame rate drops. If there's a lot of enemies, uh, forget it. I mean, it, it's going to fucking stop. 
pretty much and then start back wow it, it was it was rough it's not like it dropped down to like 30 frames per second i swear to god that thing dropped down to one frame per second there for a little bit it was <laughs> it was bad um and there's really really long load times which at, at the end of this console generation i kind of expect like how long but, um i would say at least somewhere between 30 to 45 seconds which oh, okay. if not longer but, but I, how i how... never i never counted them but i know there was plenty of time for me to get on reddit and start scrolling through posts so how uh like how many times is it like pretty frequent that you're waiting for this low time um not does it really hinder the experience that much or well, is it more like it's loaded it, up and you got like another 20 minutes of gameplay and then you gotta wait another 45 seconds versus it, like five it, minutes of gameplay it depends on how much you die no okay. <laughs> for the most time every time you or for the most part every time you die you have to go through that load screen so that last mission where i died a handful of times mm. and had to keep loading back in it was frustrating as shit like just the mission itself frustrated me and then sitting there for you know at least a good solid minute which sounds stupid but when you're actually sitting there for a minute with you know well, waiting you for a game to load cool do i go play something else you know right it it was it just added to the frustration and it was just that much more of oh fuck this <laughs> but <laughs> overall i i think it's a very well-made game uh in this uh, the same thing I said in my my first impressions at the price point it's at, it's very hard to recommend to for people to go and buy for eight to 10 hours of gameplay because you can go pick up a, a ton of other games for a lot cheaper and get hundreds of hours out of them. You know, it's it's just kind of a shame because there's a lot of uh, I think back to a lot of the games that I played, you know, 60 bucks for an eight to 10 hour game wasn't that bad, but it's just the the market we're in now it's not quite the same so as you know anybody that's listened to the show for a while knows we don't give games numbers that's not how we think we should rate a game if if jeff was going to ask me you know what i thought of this game i'm not going to be like 7.4 uh no i'm, I'm going to tell him either buy it wait for a sale or rent it if you get into you know red box or you have a local video store mm -hmm. or just don't touch it um, so for me, this game is very much a wait for a sale and or rent. That is if you can stand kind of some creepiness, if you don't like creepiness, it's not scary per se, but it is very creepy. I mean, it'll make the hair on your arm stand up a little bit. It makes you sit on the edge of your seat. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I, I would definitely say wait for a sale and pick it up if you can handle that stuff if you can't probably stay away from it because it's the entire game the entire game is creepy that's how it's set up and they do a great job of doing it and conveying it um but yeah it, i would wait for a sale and or rent it or however you think you can get it in there it i would definitely play it if you're into it though it, it is good especially if they patch out the frame rate things i mean this would be an excellent game so well wow. that sounds great i mean i remember Hearing you uh, on Xbox uh, Live speaking with me and Craig or whatever, you'd be like, oh, God. No, <laughs> don't come over here. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> what the hell is that? So you did get spooked a little bit here and there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good mild spook. I think there sure. was only a couple times they got me with a good jump scare. But, oh, man, those two times... I about shit myself. <laughs> it was bad, especially the first time it got me. I was like, God. <laughs> hey, God. Uh, well, guys, uh, thanks for listening today. Um, if you want to support the show, head on over to our Patreon, patreon.com slash diggity podcast. You can also support the show by heading over to audibletrial.com slash diggity and getting a free trial and free audiobook download on us at audibletrial.com. By heading over to audibletrial.com slash diggity, you can get a free audiobook download and 30 day free trial. Get access to a ton of audiobooks to choose from for your iPhone, your Android, your Kindle, your MP3 player. Uh, I'm pretty sure Alexa reads them to you now. A bunch of stuff. Um, audiobooks are fantastic. Uh, when you don't have time for readings, the book learnings that way, you can have time for book learnings by listening, feller, through your ear orifice. No. Um, ooh, 
<laughs> it was a rough one. Yucky. Uh, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, at Diggity Podcast. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Search for Diggity Gaming or Diggity, and you'll find us with the little green logo with the black joystick. You can find me on Xbox One. My gamer tag is Maple Jeff Brody. Mine is Luscious Brody on Xbox One. And on PlayStation 4, you can find me at Wolverine's Cousin. <laughs> <laughs> guys leave us a review it helps us out a ton whether it is a review on apple Podcasts or a star ready on spotify or deezer or tune in or a comment left on youtube um basically the way it works is the algorithms on those platforms look for engagement and that's kind of how to get to get spread and some people have done this for us recently and i thank them a lot thank you so much for doing that um and uh it's definitely helped the podcast because uh, we are slowly becoming mildly popular, and uh, that's great. It's great to be mildly popular. Yeah. Mildly, <laughs> diggity, I can see now on a shirt, Diggity, the mildly popular video gaming podcast. Get there yourself. You there you go. Let's joust. I'll wear that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wear that shirt. Absolutely. That won't be like my Steelers shirt. It's my puking shirt. So that's when you right. see me wear that's this right. now on the podcast, everyone knows. Jeff's not Jeff sure thinks he might puke. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys tonight's time we'll see you for the wednesday show see ya i challenge you to a joust <laughs> <laughs>